Hi everybody, it's Denny Jo here. In this video, I'm going to show you um, what kind of like a flip cup or a funnel cup pour using an old um, craft paint bottle. I saw it on Instagram and uh, I thought it was really cool. So here I have my colors layered in an old craft paint bottle. I had emptied and rinsed with water and then let it dry. I also had poked a hole in the bottom and then I, I put the um, painter's tape over top of that. I'll pull that off when I'm ready to release the pressure and then I'll, I'll drag it across the canvas. So I flipped it over and now I'm going to put on my base coat. And I'm going to spread this out a little bit after I pour it on. I did this to kind of help with the coverage. It was a little um, challenging, I would say, I think. And next time maybe I would not do a base coat or maybe do the base coat and, and just have it stretched really thin all over or even just paint on a background first with a brush. Um, I ended up with way too much paint on the canvas for this one. It still turned out really cool looking, but um, I would need less paint next time for sure. So here I'm stretching out the base coat. I'm holding the paint um, that I flipped over onto the canvas still. And because it has that hole um, sealed with the tape, there is some pressure there that's helping keep the paint in the bottle. So it's not floating all over the place right now yet. So after I got my base coat on, I, I wanted to make kind of a puddle around the opening of the craft paint bottle. Kind of like when you're doing an open cup pour and the you get your base coat to kind of suction around the lip of the opening so that the paints that are inside go under a little bit. So that's what I was going for. Um, you'll see here when I do pour it out the edges do sink under the ed like the edges of the base coat, but it did leave a big streak in the middle as well. So it's kind of like a mishmash of a bunch of different techniques. Techniques. Okay. So I released the pressure. I'm gonna drag and kind of give it a squiggle. I love how these colors blended together. I have more details at the end about the colors and the cell activator and the medium. So I'm trying to torch strategically here and I just want little clusters. Um, but they go crazy. They worked like they got so big and juicy. So just torch lightly and quickly in tiny spots, these cells will explode. I'm debating here if I want to add more cells because <laughs> I kind of like the blended, how well it blended together. My base coat is a darkened phthalo blue. Um, so you can see when it interacts with the paints right around the edges that it, it lightens up and it gives it that blue glow, that aqua marine kind of blue glow. It's very pretty. So next time in the future, after I've I tried this, I, I have um, decided that I would not torch as much as I did. I think after stretching it, 
by itself. Some cells are naturally going to come up on their own. Also, I might even consider not torching at all at the beginning. Stretch it out and then torch because it'll leave a lot of those cells in this nice, round, perfect form. So you, there will eventually be another video of this as well. <laughs> Me trying out everything that I think would make it better. So I'm realizing here there is a lot of paint on this canvas. It's a big pool. <laughs> and I like all of these juicy cells. There aren't any that I really want to get rid of until off. Normally when I'm deciding on my composition, I think of, okay, what could I get rid of? What could I do without? And I tilt that way usually first to kind of get it off of there. Um, and I, I was really having a tough time. I really like the blue, those light blue ones with the, it looks like orange. It's actually yellow ochre, but because it's up against a bright yellow green, it, it gives it an orange appearance, but it's actually yellow ochre. All right, I'm kind of going slow here. Still struggling with my decision on what to tilt off. It, and I ended up leaving more paint on the canvas than I really should have. But I used um, Liquitex pouring medium for this. It's my first time using it. And it's such a good medium that you can leave a little extra paint on there and it's not, it's gonna uh, help it not crack. Or craze. So this is looking very cool. I am loving the big juiciness of these cells, but I still have too much paint on this canvas. And I also have a corner down there that I need to cover. So I'm just thinking to myself, what am I going to sacrifice? <laughs> gonna go with the the less busy part the less I really liked the stripiness that was going on down there but I decided I'd rather keep some of those big juicy cells so there was so much paint on here that even after I was done it still evolved like these cells still grew as I let it sit here. You'll see in the dry result here in a second um, at the end of the video how much it changed. They, they still grew even after, it, like while it was drying. But I really like it. I think I'll play with it some more. Um, I'll give you some details here on what I used. All right, here's my colors. I got yellow ochre and viridian and a brilliant yellow green. And this is the darkened phthalo blue. I just combined a little bit of black in with my phthalo blue. I'm showing you, that's the craft bottle. It was a DecoArt Metallics uh, Extreme Sheen bottle that I had used. Yep. Here's the pouring medium, Liquitex pouring medium, gloss. And for my cell activator, I use the Coconut Milk Hair Serum by OGX. And this goes like a little, like a tiny bit goes a really long way. So I do one pump into a separate cup. If you have a plastic cup that works best because it'll last longer, it won't sink, like absorb into the paper cup. But this is all I had at the moment. And I'll, I pour one tiny drop out into each of my colors. 
and I probably had about two ounces or one and a half ounces of paint in each cup. So just one tiny drop is all that you need in each of your colors, like that. Not very much at all. All right. Oh, well, I'm gonna let it dry and I'll be back here in a bit to show you the dry results. All right, here are the dry results. It is, the, the cells are very big and plump and juicy and the color stayed pretty bright. Um, so the Liquitex pouring medium is definitely a good medium if you have the money to spare. Um, and I, I definitely will play around with this some more and, and see what I can do with using less paint. Um, I learned a lot from it. I uh, hope you did too, and thank you so much for watching.